there's always still, it's been three years and there's a part of my brain that's always trying not to think about the rape in my everyday life. I mean, it was a trauma, and it, it's a trauma that will have permanent impacts on my life. Strangely, my main trigger is getting unknown phone calls, um, because when I was dealing with the, with the legalities of my specific case, I would get these unknown calls, which was from my attacker trying to contact me personally. And so now, whenever I get unknown numbers from work, I never pick them up. Um, which is annoying because, you know, I need, I need them for work. There was, when I uh, was living in Brighton just after I was raped, a guy who worked in the supermarket who had the exact same haircut as the person who attacked me. And I basically just didn't go shopping for a while. Um, I avoided it. Various things trigger that, one of them being that this person is often or sometimes kind of on TV. Um, that obviously is a trigger, but that's a direct uh, reminder. Um, and that really annoys me. I want to sort of throw things at the TV that this person is still given a platform. There are lots of really small things that um, still set me off. It can be uh, seeing a particular kind of bedspread. Um, it can be certain, certain kinds of road. You know, just really small details that trigger the memory and suddenly I'm back there feeling traumatised again. It's more a sense of sadness and loss about what I lost as a result of the assault. So um, I'm 38 now and so a lot of my friends are you know, married and have kids and they bought property and all these things. And like, I, you know, I, I'm not at that point in my life yet because my whole life got derailed by this one, by this one kind of event and I've spent the rest of my life trying to get back onto that track. I find myself when I'm walking in the streets alone at night, I find myself getting very frightened about, you know, what if someone were to come and attack me? Um, and so I, I, I find myself armouring physically against that. Being alone in places at night, walking home from nights out, um, I don't necessarily feel safe, even if I'm with my friends. And I go through these scenarios in my mind. I would yell and I would say this and I would do that. So I'm constantly in this kind of state of hyper-awareness and kind of aggression. And I don't want to spend my life like that. I want to be able to relax and I want to be able to walk around the streets without that kind of threat. Even though it's not what happened to me, I always think, what would, you know, what would happen if something happened right now? And if I was attacked and I couldn't, I couldn't do anything about it. And also then my mind goes to the scenario of what would happen if I weren't able to defend myself. And that's really frightening. And I, I, as far as I know, this is something that a lot of women live with. And it's something which, you know, I wish the streets were much safer. I wish there wasn't a need to feel like that. It's sad that I try not to put myself in, in situations necessarily more. So, I would say that I definitely don't go out as much as I used to. Um, during my final year of university, I rarely went out. Um, and that was more due to fear of being alone at night rather than because I was working really hard. You get to learn the specific triggers that are gonna put you back there. And sometimes you can avoid them. Sometimes you have to take that deep breath and just push through them bit by bit by bit. It's a long road and I'm, I'm still not all the way there getting there. <laughs>